Hi everyone, this is Dami, the editor. Now, this week's episode is going to be just a little bit different than normal. If you've been with the show for a while, you might remember the pilot of another podcast, The Doomed Timelines, appearing on this feed. The Doomed Timelines was a show that me and Jax made, with the goal of taking homestuck fan fiction and adapting it to a podcast format, with voice actors' help along the way to bring each story to life. The hope was to make Homestuck fanfiction even more accessible than it already is, and to provide a low-commitment entry point for voice actors just getting started in the fandom. I believe we were successful in those goals. Although, unfortunately, the Doomed Timelines is no longer available in your regular podcasting app. So, for archival purposes, we've decided to bring each episode of the Doomed Timelines to the Live Laugh Stuck feed. I hope you have as much fun listening to them as we did making them. In the process of re-listening to them, I'll be honest, I've grown rather nostalgic for that time. And there is a possibility that once all the old episodes are uploaded, we'll decide to continue the show in some capacity. We're doing our best to make sure that all the voice actors credited for each episode have the appropriate links to each of their socials in the description. It's possible that the old episode's outro may not perfectly match their new social media. If you wish to find any of the actors in this episode, I encourage you to take a look at the description. And if you are an actor who has been miscredited, please let us know so that we can fix it. And I believe that might be it. In that case, without further ado, I give you the doomed timelines. Turning Legal by Anxious Amethyst. Why won't you ever play me? Afraid you'll lose? That's an incredibly amateurish taunt. No, I think it's more than that. I think there's something else. Something you don't want me to find out about. I have nothing to hide. Sure. Maybe I just don't think it's fair to trounce you in front of adoring friends, my brother, your ethically dubious girlfriend, et al. Maybe I'm just trying to afford you a little dignity. Okay. What about just a normal game of Smash, then? Just two gals palling around playing a video game like a bunch of casuals. What are the hypothetical parameters? Standard tournament rules? We'll make this an easy game. Four stock. Only item is the Smash Bowl. Final destination? You're on. Are you earning your way through college via esports? That's some sort of weird level of... I don't know. Something that's a press fucking irony there. Thought you'd try to do it via winning the Oolong Shoggoth Award for most tentacles in a Sistina. Please, Dave. I can hardly pay for college with this money. This is spending money. How is a young lady to attempt to support her Sistina tentacle writing habits without some spare cash with which to acquire rare forbidden tomes? Of course, the tomes. I forgot about the tomes. Okay, so who do you smash as? Who's your main super brother or whatever? My main? Yeah, your main punch man? Sir hits a lot. I cannot even come close to having this conversation with you. The tiny room the Smash tournament got shoved into feels cloyingly hot. You'd come here ostensibly to scope out the competition, but you're self-aware enough to admit it's partially to get out of the apartment. Also hot as hell, but also containing two nearly overdue papers and a copious amount of dishes. It's been a little too crowded and dull so far. You've been forcing yourself to keep your eyes on the game, but you're fairly confident you could beat most of these guys easily. At least you can always depend on Dave to listen to your running color commentary. What are you doing now? Watching this one girl play. She's quite good, actually. Woo, don't sound too surprised there. You might sprain something. You didn't invent kicking people's asses with the smash thing, you know. I perfected the craft. Worked out the smoothest art for that ass to fly when you kick it? Let's face it, I redefined the game. 
A noise from the crowd startles you out of your conversation. You look up from your phone, almost guilty for a second that you allowed your attention to wander when you're attempting to suss out the competition. In the three seconds you weren't watching, the girl you'd been silently rooting for absolutely trounced her opponent. She'd been doing good before, but the game's over now, when realistically, it should have taken much longer. Who's that? You say to one of the cheering onlookers. Oh, that's Teresi Pyro, says the girl. She does this every time. You don't ever play Terezi directly. You just see her at first, in the final match for almost every tournament, jeering the other player along sometimes, perfectly quiet others. It depends, you quickly discern, on what sort of player they are. If her opponent is easily angered, she's quick to jab. If they're more tolerant of the normal sort of friendly heckling players at the tournaments you go to seem to favor, she's eerily professional instead. Her girlfriend never is. You assume the loud, shambling girl always cheering her on is her girlfriend. You formally meet her before you meet Terezi, too, actually. She just walks up to you while you're attempting to subtly and coolly sulk around the edges of the little crowd of spectators and shoves a hand in your face. To shake? Presumably to shake, and announces herself. I'm Friska Circuit. I'm hot shit in League of Legends. League of Legends in general is a steaming pile of shit, you say, shaking her hand. I wouldn't touch it with a ten-foot pole. Rose Lalonde. I'm hot shit in Call of Duty, too. You're not making a great case for yourself. You say, trying to look past her to see what Terezi's doing. Her eyes get wide. Wait, Lalonde? Holy shit, are you Roxy Lalonde's kid's sister? Here's the real reason you picked Super Smash Brothers as your eSport of choice. It's one of the few games Roxy hasn't bothered to try and play professionally. It's also one of the few games, besides Scrabble and occasionally Grandmaster Tetris, that you're able to beat her in. Not that that's the biggest accomplishment, is Roxy's insistence on always playing Snake. He has 50 dogs, Rose. He just wants to pet their little faces. Leaves quite a few weaknesses to exploit. So you think, maybe this one thing you can have. You think, this is fun, maybe I'll try it. You think, this is fun, maybe I can be perfect at it. You think later that Terezi might have some of the same reasons for picking the game she's picked. Not that she'd ever say anything like that, but nevertheless. It's the dogged determination she defends the game with, the presumption that her mastery of it means a great deal more than any sort of skill at something like Call of Duty or StarCraft could mean. Briska mocks me for playing something as minor league as Smash instead of something that actually rakes in a good deal of money. She misunderstands the appeal. I like Smash. I like the one-on-one -on -one aspect. It can be as much about knowing your opponent as it is about knowing the game. So you like to get up close with the competition? You ask. She smiles. I like to get very up close with the competition. That's promising. So is using your freaky mind-reading powers really turning legal? I'm not using any powers, freaky or otherwise. And I told you, I can't read people's minds, just... For C fortuitous outcomes. So is using your freaky luck powers really turning legal? Well, there's no rules against them. The earbud claws. Classic. Here's the thing that actually gets you to talk to her. You think she might have something up her sleeve, too. Said secret not being the fact that she's legally blind. A lot of people don't figure that out, but you did. Something different altogether. You think she might have the ability to do something like what you can do. It's in the way she tilts her head sometimes, like she's hearing something far away, or else in her ramrod straight posture, the certainty with which she makes her decisions, her slightly too fast reactions to her opponents. Terezi Pyrope, says Terezi, thwacking her cane against Dave's extended hand. Dave Strider, says Dave. So, how come you never got into the eSports? asks Terezi. It seems to run in the family. Oh no. No, 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 says Dave. I studiously attempt to be only the highest tier of shit with anything even tangentially related to sports of the E kind. I attend the church of button mashing. I played Team Fortress 2 once, and it made me cry. Tears of defeat? Delicious tears of pain? Tears of joy, when I realized I was free of the family curse. Never would I have to competitively play video games to earn my living. What do you do? Says Terezi, leaning into the do. 
studying to be a paleontologist, he says. Also, I am, of course, hellishly famous in the world of shitty digital entertainment. Oh, no, you say, realization dawning. You two are going to be friends. Tell me more about this digital entertainment, says Terezi. Precisely how shitty. You and Terezi end up at the same cons, the same tournaments, face off against the same opponents. You start meeting up with her after games to chat, sometimes risk us there too. But you never actually play her. You know you're going to have to eventually. So I'm going to need you to fuck off for about five hours tomorrow, if that's all right. Whoa, watch the language, Lalon. Why is your girlfriend coming over? I don't have a girlfriend. I'm just going to play a friendly bout of SSBB with a friend in a friendly manner, and I need there to be no witnesses. <laughs> Holy shit, that is definitely the sort of thing someone says right before they murder someone. Wait, Rose, you're not seriously planning to murder Sherezi, are you? She's the shit. We're working on a collab project right now. If you kill her, it'll ruin the whole effect. Just go on a date with your boyfriend or something. Far away from here. I don't have a boyfriend just as much as you don't have a girlfriend. Which, wait, I think I own both of us there? Anyway, just bring her to your place instead. You know I don't have the setup for that. Remind me why I'm the one with the fancy TV when you're the one who uses it for gaming or whatever. Irony? Irony seems likely culprit. Also, it doesn't fit anywhere in my apartment. Fuck. It's always the irony that gets you in the end. Remind me why you're the only member of our semi-coherent family to not acquire some sort of skill in video games when you're the one with the technology to do it. Sports. Literally the second you attach the suffix sport to something, I lose all skill with and knowledge of it. It just happens. Okay, well, I'm breaking into your apartment tomorrow night. Whether you're there or not is your own business. Dave wisely chooses not to be there. The apartment's dark when you let Terezi in, and as she pours over the contents of Dave's apartment, the secondary advantage of not playing at your apartment occurs to you. She doesn't get to know what you keep in your room. Enough of this silly business, she says when she's done knocking around Dave's jars full of dead things. Let's get to the real business. You settle onto the couch. She digs around under the TV. You give her the courtesy of letting her choose which controller she'd like. One last stipulation. You say, taking the controller she discards. Wanna play blindfolded? Not likely. You say. No, we can each forbid each other from selecting one character. Her eyebrows furrow. You know she's going to say yes. And you know she knows you know that. And she already knows the gambit she's playing, and that's the thrill to it. Mind games chess via smash. All right. She says. I forbid you from... The power goes out. Really? You say. What? She asks. You didn't see this coming? The documentarian of our story today is Anxious Anarchist, who you can find on Archive of Our Own as Anxious Anarchist. Remember to go drop some kudos on their fic if you enjoyed today's show. The narrator of our story today was Luna Fay Kaida, who you can find by messaging on Discord at a lunar dragon hashtag 6969. The voice of Terezi Pyro was Fine Specimen Retrieved, who you can find at Kit Munch on Twitter and as Fine Specimen Retrieved on AO3. The voice of Rose Lalonde was Jax, who you can find on Twitter at Dirkification, on Tumblr at sociallyanxiousdragon.tumblr.com and on Archive of Our Own as Amberlin. Jax also helps out as the show's producer. The voice of Dave Strider was Duncan, who you can find as Ego Sweetheart just about anything. The voice of Vriska Circuit was Articulately Composed, who you can find on Twitter at ACMusic27, or on YouTube as Articulately Composed. The voice of Roxy Lalonde was Matriaka, who you can find on Twitter at Exiasin. The editor and composer for the show is Domi, who you can find on Twitter at DominoThief, on Tumblr at DominoThief.tumblr.com, and on SoundCloud, also as DominoThief. Art for the show was drawn by at DJDoodlesArt on Twitter. You can also find links to all of our talented creators in the show's description. Currently, there is no way to support the show financially, but if you'd like to support anyone, we'd like to please direct your love towards our lovely writers and actors, without whom the show could not be possible. 
If you'd like to be a part of the show, you can visit our Twitter at TDTCast to find out more. There, you can find a link to our Discord server, where you can come and show off your fix, get updated when auditions are needed for new parts, or just hang out and drop us a line. Our cast is always rotating, and we'd love to feature as many voices as possible. Remember to keep creating, friends. Thank you to Dami for editing the show and for our theme song, which you can find at Domino Thief on SoundCloud and in the show's notes. Also, thank you to our fakest fan tier member, Danny the Spoon Lord, for your support. If you'd like to get a shout out or just support the podcast, head on over to ko-fi.com slash jacksyaks, link also found in the show notes, and sign up for as little as $1 a month. For all other links, head over to jacksyax.com where you can always find the latest information. Thanks for listening. 